friends, it's Jasmine, and I hope that you all are doing well. So it's Virgo season, and um, wow, this season for me has been so busy. There's been so much going on between going to the Louisville, Kentucky, like witches ball, and then also attending Spirit Fest. So there's kind of been like a lot going on. Oh, also the coven, we had our Maybon ritual. And so I kind of wanted to fill you guys in on some of those things. This is going to be like the Virgo magic uh, video. However, instead of really like doing spell work and talking about some active spell work, instead I wanted to talk about what I've been up to. Um, sometimes like when we're just busy witches on the go, you know, ceremonial ritual or ceremonial spell work is not always something that's like feasible or possible. And I feel like as witches, theoretically, kind of what we're doing throughout our day-to-day -day lives is inherently uh, magical. There's like bits of magic kind of tucked away in there. And so, yeah, this Virgo uh, season magic video is going to be like a little bit different than some of the others in the series. So let me start with, hi, my name is Jasmine. I am a practicing witch and witchy content creator here on YouTube. I make videos about paganism, folklore, spellcraft, and I just kind of vlog about like my life and uh, life as a coven witch. And um, there's a lot of dumb things I do with my friends here on the channel. I do the As the Cauldron Bubbles podcast. We do all types of stuff over here. So if you're interested in any of that, definitely check out um, some of the other stuff on the channel. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. Um, I really appreciate all the love and support. I still have these like gold nails right now. I have a nail appointment tomorrow though. And then I also recently just got this new ring. Sapphire is my birthstone. So that's what I got. I love it. Starting first with the Midwest Witches Ball that was hosted in Louisville, Kentucky. I believe this was kind of like the first of its kind in terms of like the Midwest. And I know that our Witches Ball in Louisville is like a standalone thing that's not really affiliated with any other Witches Balls. And they did make like an official statement about that. Um, there are two other really big Witches Balls that are held in Salem, Massachusetts and New Orleans. And I would love the opportunity to go to one of their Witches Balls. But if I were to make a trip from Indiana to Salem or to New Orleans, then I would definitely have to book like for an entire week. I couldn't just rationalize going there just for a ball because there would be other things I would want to see and do there. So when I found out that we were having a witch's ball in Louisville, which is really not far from me, I think it's maybe like a two hour drive or so, I decided right then and there that I absolutely had to go. And so I hit up some friends and some other witches in the coven and kind of wanted to see like, hey, who's all interested in going? Because we could definitely get an Airbnb for the weekend. And that's what we did. I'll probably throw some clips in here from the Witch's Ball, like now. if we were alive we could have done this as a live do you guys want to yeah fuck it why not let's just do it as a live okay that'll fuck make it. me we'll not have to edit it we'll do a live we're gonna do a live <laughs>
all was like a super magical experience. Of course, it's a bunch of witches getting together, like there's magic bound to happen. And overall, I would give the entire event probably like an eight out of 10, I would say. Like expectation versus reality. I feel like what I was expecting the ball to be was pretty much what it was. I mean, there were some really cool vendors there that had some great art and I got to actually meet the host or one of the co-hosts, um, Antoinette, who was really super sweet and it was awesome getting to meet them. Um, they also had some performers there. They had some belly dancers there and um, some other sort of like gymnastic performers there as well. So that was cool. Um, I feel like that's a very kind of common thing that I see at a lot of pagan or witch events. I know that at our pagan pride, we normally have um, a belly dance troupe that performs there. So that was kind of cool because it kind of made me just feel like I was in a very like pagan space. It's something that we often have at our events. Also, we did get like the VIP um, tickets, which were only like $10 more than a regular ticket. And what that came with was an art print, which I actually have that right here. So this is the art print, which one of the co-hosts or the main host of the Witch's Ball was the Raven's Roost, which I believe is a metaphysical store near there, like in New Albany or something like that. And so I thought it was cute that the Raven's Roost was helping put this on and we had a Raven print, which for those of you who have been following my channel like for a while, you know that like the Raven Mother is like near and dear and close to my heart. So getting this print was super cool. Um, this was in the VIP bag. And then we also got some Hecate incense, some loose Hecate incense, and we got like um, a pin that had like a cute W and a B for the witch's ball and a sticker that said witch's ball. And then we got like a $5 off coupon for the Raven's Roost store, which unfortunately I did not have an opportunity to go. Most people at the ball were in what I would consider to be kind of like a Victorian-esque or just goth-esque sort of apparel. I mean, it's a formal event and that's what most people were wearing. A lot of people had like the filigree like sort of style masks. I mean, it was really cool. There's something enchanting about a masquerade. Um, I went as like a femme Anubis and so that was fun. I bumped into a friend who was kind of dressed up as like Hecate. And so she and I, because we were in those sort of costumes, like it was cool taking pictures with people or people just coming up and asking if they could take photos with us. So that was kind of cool. Also like my costume, my Anubis costume was also kind of like a black hound is, you know, so also it was like Hecate and a hellhound. Anyway, it was a whole vibe. I'll see if I can throw some pictures in here also. Kevin Mates and I decided that it would be kind of fun to go out into the middle of the dance floor and do our version of like the LBRP, which we did that. And there's a video here on the channel if you just want to go see that, but I'll probably throw a little clip in here as well. something that was like really powerful and I felt like we raised a lot of energy and it was something that like I'm not sure how many other people at the ball had seen before we definitely kind of got like some interesting looks and right after that like Antoinette had came up and we kind of met and talked and um, it was nice Oh, there was also a bar at the ball, so there was alcohol there. That was nice. So, you know, I had to get a couple of white claws as I was there. It was kind of funny because when we pulled up, um, you know, we get signed in, we get checked in. They did a security check, which I thought that, that was good. We ended up taking an Uber there from our hotel. Um, we stayed at the Galt, the Galt house, um, which that was a beautiful hotel. And we got an Uber from there to the Witch's Ball. And um, as soon as we got in and got our uh, VIP bags, I pretty much went right to the bar because I, I figured like they would have a long line. It looked like they only had maybe like four bartenders and this was a sold out event. Um, so I went up there and I got like eight White Claws and uh, before, you know, everything got crazy and I just like shoved them all into like my bag because I did not want to go back up there in that line. 
after the witch's ball, we went back to the hotel room. We just kind of vibed. And then um, on our way out of Louisville, we decided to stop at this place called the Witch's Tree, which is in downtown Louisville. And it was a little bit difficult to get to, which I feel like is kind of part of the experience. Um, but there's a story behind this tree. Anyways, it's basically this really big, kind of twisted, mangled looking uh, tree in downtown Louisville that people go and leave like little thingamabobs and thingamajigs at, like little charms and necklaces. We saw poppet dolls and coins and other offerings. And the story goes, um, and I'm paraphrasing here, so there might be some details I leave out. If you're more familiar with the witch's tree, uh, feel free to correct me or fill in my blanks down below in the comments. But basically the story was that there was like a coven of witches that would meet up around this tree and do coven things. It's not super explanatory about what they were doing. Uh, allegedly, there was a coven that would meet up around this tree and the town uh, wanted to cut the tree down and like turn it into a maypole. And like the witches threatened the town like not to do that um, for reasons that I'm not sure why it was special to them. And the town didn't listen and went ahead and cut the tree down. And allegedly the witches summoned some, when I, when I looked on like line, it said that the witches summoned like a storm demon, which like, which like, I'm not sure about that, but maybe allegedly the witches summoned some sort of like terrible storm spirit that like wrecked through Louisville. And when that happened, lightning struck the old tree trunk from where the original tree was and a new tree grew from this tree trunk and it grew very twisted and it grew very mangled and so it created a lot of superstition around the tree and still to this day allegedly people go and leave offerings to kind of bribe the spirits of the witches um, that may still be around the tree or possibly even witches in the area um, to like hold their malevolence towards the town or that even still like when bad storms roll in people will go and make offerings at this tree as a way to try to push the storms around Louisville so it doesn't hit the city. So I thought that, that was super interesting and it was something kind of quick and fun that some of us could go check out so we did. The tree was definitely cool. Um, it was something that I've not seen before. And I know that like witches trees are like a fairly common phenomenon that like I know that other states um, have them. And like the concept of leaving offerings at trees or ritualizing a tree, I don't think is necessarily like original to the Louis witches tree. Cause I know that that's done also in like other traditions as well. Um, I know that for us and our coven and our neo-living tradition like we have some spots that we meet up and we have some spots similar to that that are sacred to us for reasons I'm not going to disclose in this video um, but going to the tree with some of my coven mates I didn't feel like alarmed or scared of course in any way it was more just like kind of an honor to be in the tree's presence and um, it does look really cool and it does kind of Pull you to pause and so when we got there we you know brought some offerings as well I was kind of giving my offerings to the tree more so with the intention of just like kind of paying my respects to the witches the folkloric witches that surround this tree or the very real witches that you know allegedly really did meet up um and their coven around this tree just to kind of pay our respects to that and there was kind of a cool moment where one of my coven mates like rested their hand on the tree and immediately after we heard like almost like this strange sort of like scream which we realized moments later it was a cat but as soon as she touched the tree like a ton of stray cats just kind of started coming around the area and then I was kind of like leaving my offering at the tree and there was like a couple of cars that pulled up with some I would say like teenagers or like very young adults um, and there was probably about like 12 of them like two three cars 12 of them they started walking up towards the tree and they like saw me um, grabbing some dirt from the tree. 
and immediately started talking about like something about how I was a witch or we were witches or something. And like, literally they did not walk. They basically ran back to their car and drove off like immediately, which was kind of weird, but also funny. Cause like, I mean, you're coming to a place called the witch's tree and you happen to see witches there. Like, what did you expect? I don't know. There wasn't anything like sinister that we were doing. I had just made my offering. We were kind of talking to the spirits and to the tree and we were just kind of taking it all in. And there was some loose dirt towards like the very base um, of like where the sidewalk would meet where the tree would be. And there was some loose dirt. So I was just taking some of that, you know, with respect and with permission. And I figured that I could, you know, bring this dirt home and um, add it into some other sacred trees dirt and also create more witches tree dirt and have that be like an item that I can utilize in my practice to connect with folkloric witches that surround this tree. Um, to fly out to that tree in the astral to use it for that or also just to connect with like the mighty dead witch current in general and so um that's why i had brought some of that back also had our uh mavon ritual um the solar court which we had at this gorgeous 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 like amphitheater um at nighttime it was like especially gorgeous and Part of our ritual also um, was a witch's dedication. And so we kind of facilitated space for um, witches who were in our coven, but also guests of our coven's ritual to dedicate themselves to themselves and to kind of stand in their own power and claim the word witch and that title for themselves. in a magical way, in a very public way, um, in front of other witches and the public, because this amphitheater is in a public space, which the thing about public rituals, sometimes people, especially people who are newer to ritual, feel a little nervous about going to a, a ritual that's in a public setting. And I understand why, especially like in our area where we live, it's fairly conservative and you just have to be careful. However, most people, typically, when you're in a public space doing a, an, a public ritual like that, and you know, when you're in a public space, you're gonna be around the public. Like, sometimes that just happens. Now, for some of our rituals that are in the public, they're pretty tucked away, um, and we never really disclose our exact location when we're doing ritual. But sometimes people might be walking on trails, or like, for example, at this amphitheater, there were definitely people around the general sort of vicinity. And in general, most people are just genuinely curious because they've never seen something like this before. And so if they are staring, they're normally staring out of curiosity or sometimes even interest. Um, I don't feel like most people are staring with malevolence and I don't know what was going on with my neighbors there, but yeah, so I don't think that most people are staring like with malevolence and also like we have been circling up like this and facilitating space like this for like going on over five years. And the very first time that we have been proselytized to or evangelized to was actually at this Maybond ritual. Um, I do want to make a video just kind of talking about group rituals through a public setting and kind of talk about etiquette and like commonly acceptable like kind of do's and don'ts and just kind of make like a video for like anyone who might be coming to one of our coven's public rituals for them to kind of watch and just see kind of like what to expect to some to some extent because not everything can be disclosed but I think in general 
A lot of what I would say would probably also apply to other Coven's group ritual settings as well. So be on the lookout for that. And if you have any suggestions about like etiquette when it comes to open rituals like that, you can comment down below and maybe I'll include some of that in my video where I talk about it. Um, but this lady did come up and try to interrupt our ritual and like prophesize to us. Which Ooh, okay. At first, I thought that she might have been someone actually from the place that we were doing our ritual at, um, but she wasn't, and I quickly realized that. Like, I kind of turned around, and she started talking about Jesus, so I just turned back around and, like, turned the music up and rose the invocations, like, even louder, and then um, one of our coven mates, you know, kind of took a sidestep and kind of ushered her away from the coven, and we handled it very, like, civilly and respectfully. And I feel like in those situations, that's kind of what you want to do. I mean, I understand being frustrated or like wanting to return the disrespect because like that is such like a big front to like what we're doing, right? It's not like we go into their sacred establishments or whatever and like disrupt what they're doing and try to prophesize. I think that most of those people genuinely think that they're doing the right thing by trying to save people's souls. However, like it's still annoying and wrong, but I think handling the situation with as much like dignity and respect is going to be what's going to make the craft and what we are doing look better in the eyes of the public. Um, because if there are people watching, you know, we're already a religious minority. And so like if things escalate, we already have the shorthand. And so I feel like it's definitely best for us to just kind of like de-escalate the situation and like keep it moving you know um and that's exactly how we handled that situation I'm very proud of our coven you know that like I said that was kind of the first time that we had really been proselytized to but I feel like that particular ritual in terms of like Virgo magic you know, during that season of Virgo, during the season of the great mother, during the season of the great goddess of Demeter, to bring witches into their own confidence I feel like is a very maternal and like Virgo divine virgin sort of like energy to like help other witches find their way to the crooked path or the path of night or you know just their own magic right like they're not necessarily dedicating to any deity they're not dedicating to the coven they're dedicating to themselves and they're stepping into their sovereignty as witch and they're claiming their own power and to be able to facilitate that ritual was really meaningful um i think for our group and for me and i dedicated as well um i think it's something that Dedication rituals to me are like a beautiful thing and it's something that I kind of want to do maybe every Virgo season is like rededicate myself to the craft and to the great goddess of my own understanding. Um, I think that that's like a really beautiful thing. I think it's a really empowering thing. Um, and it was really special to be able to be in that ritual and see witches who kind of were stepping into this like for the first time. Like, I can't really even put it into words. Um, it just makes me feel so much reverence, I think, for the craft in general. And also, like, very proud of, like, some of my friends who decided to take that oath, but also very proud for some of my friends who were at the ritual who decided to sit it out because, you know, when there's a group of people all doing something and, like, we told everyone, like, this is going to be part of the ritual. It doesn't mean that you have to also dedicate, um, but if you want to, you can. Like, it made me feel very proud for the folks that, you know, didn't dedicate because it can feel sometimes very hard or you can even feel pressured sometimes to do something that like the overall group is doing. And I was proud that they sat that out too. Um, and the ritual was beautiful. And, you know, the person who prophesied, like while they might have disturbed the ritual for a brief couple of moments, um, overall the ritual was great and the amphitheater was especially gorgeous at night. I've also been watching like a lot of sort of like witchy or occult related things on Netflix. Like I just finished watching The Devil in Ohio. 
I kind of want to make a separate video about that. I really enjoyed The Devil in Ohio, and so I want to talk about it. And I also finished The Order, um, which is another interesting show that a friend had recommended to me. So I might also be making a video soon just kind of talking about, like, pop culture witchery and, like, shows that I've been watching and, like, recommendations or what I don't recommend because there's some things I've watched that I have thought were kind of trash. But that's kind of what's been going on with me through, like, the Virgo season magic. And I'm sorry that I don't have like a ritual per se, um, or like specific Virgo related spellcraft to share with you. Like I said, I've just been busy and that's how it is sometimes, but I feel like the magical season of Virgo and connecting with like that great goddess, connecting with like that maternal Demeter corn mother sort of energy, which is how I interpret it here in the Midwest, like, I feel like I have found that through going to places like the Witch's Tree and the Witch's Ball and facilitating, like, our Mabon ritual. So, anyway, that is going to be the end of this video. I'm looking at the time here and I, I can tell that, like, you know, it's kind of stretching on. But thank you all so much for watching and for supporting the channel. Um, we do have another Beginner's Astrology course that will be available online and in person starting September 28th. It will run for five consecutive weeks and it will be at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Times. So you can join that online. You can join that in person. Check my Instagram out, Jasmine Ambrosia. And if you have any questions, you can DM me there. Um, and if you want to do it self-taught, you can check out the Patreon where I have a bunch of different classes and also where all of my content goes first. So if you want to be kind of the first in the loop of things, you can check out my Patreon. But thank you all so much for watching. Blessed be, and I'll see you in hell. America, brother. I can't. I'm gonna stick with it. I'm gonna just stick with her. That'll do me.